Hey everyone, it's Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dive into this week's threat snapshot. So over the coming weeks, we're gonna be taking a look at some of these uh, routinely exploited vulnerabilities that CISA put out. So here we can see this is some threat intelligence on our platform, but if we actually go back to the source, um, this is a summary of the most commonly exploited CVEs from 2021. And you may be asking, well, hey, why are we looking at these if they're last year's vulnerabilities? Uh, they are still really uh, well exploited um, even today. Uh, again, if patch management was effective across the board, we wouldn't really be seeing a lot of these issues. Um, and the fun fact here too is that some of these are also the top exploited ones from 2020. Um, yeah, they mentioned that here. So uh, if we actually take a look at this list, you can see a couple of them have been around for a while, um, still kind of dangling and holding on there. Um, definitely going to be doing a logger deep dive into proxy shell, proxy log on an exchange server in the future. That one's pretty cool. I know we've already covered log for shell in another threat snapshot. Um, today we're going to look at this one over here, this Atlassian Confluence Server and Data Center code execution. I think it's pretty cool and there's uh, a couple of nuances here that I want to talk through. So we went ahead, we created a couple of sessions in the platform. Um, so this is affecting the on-prem version of Confluence Server and Data Center. Um, you can see there are some specific versions that are vulnerable. Uh, we ran this and installed it both on uh, Windows Server and uh, Linux Server. Um, there are a little bit different detections for both. Um, we're going to actually focus on the Windows one here. And uh, ultimately, this is a vulnerability in a Java component. It's the OGNL, uh, pronounced OGNL. Um, actually, that's a, a fun fact. If you take a look, they say it's the drunken pronunciation of the last part of orthogonal. So I hope I'm saying that right. But um, so OGNL is really, it's a kind of an intermediate language where you can um, interact with properties in Java. and. Ultimately, this has been responsible for several code execution bugs in the past. Um, we've seen you know, remote code execution with Apache struts and things using this. So if, this, if, it's, um, if there's software using this vulnerable kind of component in that way and not sanitizing that input, um, it can lead to some, uh, some very bad bugs here. So this is unauthenticated. Again, if this is an on-prem version of Confluence that's running and not updated, uh, it can be very easy for the attacker to exploit. So lots of public POCs on GitHub. This one is from Hevox. Uh, it's a really simple uh, Python script that they have. And all you really have to do is point the Confluence URL at it. Um, it will pick a specific vulnerable page to exploit. And again, there's certain unauthenticated pages that are vulnerable to this. There is a list with several of these. So again, if one of them doesn't work, or if you're trying as a hacker to evade signatures, you can also try a different one. Um, this script does allow you to, to try both. So um, took a look at this. Um, on the Windows side, we can see Confluence is running. Um, I can actually click around on the video and we don't actually see much happening here on the victim side. Uh, on, on the Linux side, if we hop back over here, so um, again, all we did was download the POC from GitHub, did the git pull, and then we uh, run that attack. So two basic commands, run a who am I? Um, we can see this is running as uh, NT Authority Network Service, and then just do a, a simple net user. Obviously, if we were doing something more malicious, we could be um, throwing a PowerShell one-liner, we could um, be you know, trying to download some of our own malware, execute a you know, backdoor, drop a web shell, things of that nature. Um, can take a look here at some of the markers. So we can definitely see we have the possibility to detect these commands um, on the host. I think this actually really shows well again on our process graph here. So um, Confluence is a Java-based application. So we can see here that there's um, Java EXE that's running as part of this, um, again, out of the Confluence directory, as well as Tomcat. And for this particular version, um, it's Tomcat 9. And um, funny enough, um, you know, normally you don't see a lot of child processes out of these. Um, Java here is running taskless. This is just something that's kind of going on in the background every, looks like every three, four seconds. Um, so it's running this command. Uh, don't know what that actually is doing behind the hood, what Confluence needs that for, but um, so we can see that that's there and that's creating some noise. Uh, but really what we're focusing on here is this Tomcat 9. So we can see here, this is running out of the Confluence path. And when we run those code executions, 
Again, we can see our CMD spawning who am I, so we've got detections for that as well as net user. And it's really this kind of parent-child relationship flow that's interesting here on the command line. And then also, obviously, like I said, there's some interesting network detections for this as well. So how do I defend against this? Um, ultimately, you should be patching this. So again, there are different versions of software. We use the latest version that was unpatched before um, 7.2.15. Um, so this is really just an update to patch. Um, how would I hunt for this activity in my network? Uh, so there's definitely a couple of different things that we can do here. Um, process creation is one of them. And I'm going to actually kind of take a look at one of these Sigma community analytics first. And again, this is really part of the power of snap attack and why you really need to test your analytics. So this one here, it shows untests in our platform and no related sessions found. So what that means is even though we have true positive attacks in our database, um, this analytic has never hit. So we could take a look at it. Um, that zero could mean many things. It could be a logic or syntax error. Um, what we can actually see here is the author was looking for, again, that Atlassian Confluence JRE, but they're looking for java.exe to be spawning CMD or PowerShell or CertUtil or curl or whoami or ipconfig. Um, but all of those, as we saw on Windows, was popping up under Tomcat. So again, this is one of those things where if you're not testing your analytics, you could say, you know, read the threat intelligence report. You could read the bolt and say, yeah, I think that's going to pop out of java.exe and, and not realize that it could be running out from another thing. So obviously, we did create an analytic um, that mirrors that. Um, again, focusing on, again, a parent path, Atlassian Confluence, looking for Tomcat, and again, looking for CMD PowerShell. Certainly, you could add other things there, but um, based on the fact that the first time that this hits, it has to use a, a binary that's on the host uh, before it can you know, download a second stage or other stuff, it's more likely going to be one of those two than others. And this is also hitting on you know, some of our sessions. We can take a look, we can see these you know, hits that are validating here. So it's matching that parent image and the path. Uh, also did mention that there is some network-based detections on here. Um, so there's some you know, good threat intelligence um, that was looking at enumerating all of the different paths that are vulnerable. So if you've got um, web access logs or proxy logs, or even like using Bro Packet Capture to extract these, you can look for um, any of these URIs that it's going to be hitting. Um, do keep in mind that the URIs alone are not an indicator of compromise um, or an indicator of attack here because these are legitimate URLs that are used quite widely in the application. Um, again, if you had full packet capture, what you'd really be looking for is this, uh, this Unicode character 0027. That is the Surefire giveaway um, that's required to actually um, escape out of that Ognol and inject your own Java code in there, which is going to run that um, remote code execution uh, piece of this. So that's really the crux. But again, from a, a web access log, you're not going to actually see the post data. So this is a, a medium to maybe even low confidence, depending on how your users are using this. Um, you can certainly look for some of the more common ones. I think most of the POCs I saw are using this create page uh, inter variables action. Um, however, again, for defense in depth, it would be good to include as many of those as you can. So. Anyway, that wraps up our threat snapshot for this week. It's a weekly series, so be sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.